guys welcome to SMI Hope Canada my name is Julie and here we talk about everything studying and immigrating to Canada so if you are new here feel free just feel free <laughs> Let me um, okay so today I want to talk about something that people always ask me about first just to let you know I'm not an immigration consultant I'm not an immigration lawyer but today um, like everything i talk about on my channel is something that I've, I've experienced or that my friends or something i've experienced or things that i've seen things that i've personally experienced and you know just real life stuff so i hope you can learn one or two things from it but it's still your duty to make sure you do your research to make your own decision this is just my advice um what pros what are the pros of doing a one-year degree program um, I have a note here, so I'll just go over. So first, the thing is, you finish on time. You finish on time because you start. You it's it's basically September to April, and you are done. Like when you say a one year program, it's not January to December. It's September to April, like it goes by very fast. And the second thing is, you spend less. It's cheaper. That's the truth. Like instead of doing a two year program, yes. And these are things that you might be considering. Like you might be considering. Uh, well, why would I spend like more on a three-year program, you know, so it's cheaper and another thing is you you start your career earlier if you chose a marketable course So be very careful with a one-year program choose a marketable like I can't start telling you what kind of course is marketable You know, but there are lots of them, but you have to still choose what is interesting to you So, uh, you know, I know there's things like project management, you know, there are one-year de degrees that are really really marketable so do your research very well and be very strategic but if you choose a marketable course you can start your career earlier like get a job immediately and then you you start your career and then you are good okay but some of the cons is that um first is one year it's a one-year program and it flies like one year flies especially if you are new like before you finish acclimatizing your degree is over and if you are someone that um is working to support yourself it will be over even twice faster <laughs> like time will go by very fast because you are working you are always busy and it means that you might not even have time to actually think of of the next strategy like when you are done what do you want to do when you are done or like your PR how do you want to go about getting your PR you know things like this you might not have the time or luxury of time to really really be strategic and consider your options so those are some of the cons of doing a one-year degree program the second one and it's a big one is that you get just one year so if you do a one-year degree program here in Canada you get one year postgraduate work permit and it just like instead of doing if you will still talk about a two-year program so you get one year so all in all what you have in canada as a temporary resident is two years so you have two years to find a way to get a pr or else you have to go back home and then the third thing in my opinion is if you have family like it's kind of harder i don't know maybe you correct me but it's kind of harder justifying to a visa officer why you should bring your family for a one-year program um but if you package yourself well, you still you should still be able to bring your family on one year program. As I always say, like even if you are coming for six months, you have a right to bring your family. You have a right to bring like your spouse or your children. So that should be that shouldn't be a deterrent to you bringing your family. Um, so yeah, like understand that you have a right to do it. And so don't let it be a deterrent and it shouldn't be like a sole reason for considering a one-year one degree program but i think the other two things that i said earlier the fact that you have only one year postgraduate work permit and the fact that you only have one year to study and two years in total to be a temporary resident is a big enough reason to want to consider a two-year program now let's talk about two years programs um for the for before i move and talk about the two-year program um, I want to say like these are some of my tips if you are coming for a one-year program like maybe you don't have that much money That's what you can afford or that's the kind of admission you are getting if you are coming for a one-year program I would say target schools that are in Provinces that where it's easier to get a PR except if you are coming for an extremely marketable course Or you're just highly favored just target just target a province 
you know, that where it's easier, like Atlantic Canada is a big thing now here. If you can tolerate the cold, um, Atlantic Canada, I did a video on it and I will link it. It's um, New Brunswick, um, in Nova Scotia, you know, provinces like that, it's easier to get a permanent residence immediately when you are done with your study, whether it's one year or two years. So you want to target um, that. But some, some, some of the programs place a limitation as well that you have to do at least an 18-month program. So that's also something to think about. Um, but still, all in all, like instead of coming to a place like Toronto, a place like Toronto where sorry Ontario where is more competitive like about 40% of people in Canada in Ontario you know you might want to target places like that and uh, places like Manitoba is another good example for Manitoba there are some uh, part of their pub, uh, provincial nomination that you all you need is six month work um, all you need is six month work so places like Manitoba as well Manitoba has like provincial nomination that um, where all you have to have is a six month skilled work experience so the way it goes here is when you finish your degree you have to look for a job if you had prior experience before coming to canada you can apply for federal skill worker even whilst as a student or after you are done but if you don't have any experience before all you have is your um, experience in canada you know so you might want like to have more like a higher point for your express entry it would be better to have skilled work experience in canada like there are different types of jobs in canada some are not skilled so you have to land a skilled job to even qualify for canadian experience class you know and also most like for express entry you have to have one year skilled work experience you know but for manitoba there are some of their nominations like provincial nominations where all you need is six months you know so it gives you extra six months in your one year work permit to to get your pr you know so that things just transition smoothly and you don't have to go home before getting the PR or something like that so these are things you need to consider really 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 consider the province consider a province that is looking for permanent residence so that you are able to get your PR easily that's if you're going for one year that's just my tip for you for the two year now for instance i always advise people to go for two year over a one year program for so many reasons first you have a total of two years as a student and then you have three years work permit so you have total of five years as a student and even the two year is not two calendar you won't be studying for two two calendar year like you'll be studying january to december january to december you will just be studying september to april and then september to april so it's, it's actually 18 months it's an 18 month program not really two years if you get what i mean so it's it's, it's just like i feel like it's just like eight months longer than one year and i mean sorry six months longer than one year all in all so so in terms of the duration of study it's not that longer than um than a one-year program and also um you have enough time to integrate you have enough time even after your studies you have three years work permit so at least even if you don't get a skilled job in the first year you still have two years uh, between that three years now but you will get a skilled job you know so things like that these are things that you need to really 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 consider and i just want to end with this that even if you have if you are doing if you did a two-year program and you have a three-year postgraduate work permit you still have to be very strategic and make sure you take uh, embrace all opportunities don't just sit down and think pr will fall in your laps before you know it is all over like before you know it five years is over i'm telling you so you still have to be strategic and just make sure you are leveraging yourself you are while you are still doing your degree you are already networking so that you get a very good job and you can start with your pr you i mean in fact you started planning for your pr with prayers of course start doing your ilts you know let me give a very good example last year when covid happened um so many people had this opportunity to to get their pr like students there was this um, thing that just came up and then international students had like let me say international graduates fresh graduates those that just finished they had the opportunity to get a pr once they had their ilts done and they had a particular like score for their ilts i had friends that were able to maximize this opportunity because they had done the ilts prior to when that stuff was released 
Now, I had people that were graduates as well, fresh graduates, but they couldn't apply for it because they had not done the IELTS and they did not have the IELTS results when it was released. So it was so crazy during that period. So many people were trying to apply and um, to register for the IELTS because Canada just released it out of the blues. Nobody expected it. So IELTS uh, program, uh, their website crashed. Like those offering IELTS, British Council and um, CELPIP, I remember during that period last year, everything just crashed. And you know, they released this thing and you, it closed within, I think, 24 hours. I'm not sure. Like, with, it certainly was not more, it didn't stay open for more than 24 hours. It closed, like, it was full. Like, and who were those that were able to apply within that 24 hours? Those already had their ILTS. And that's why I always tell people if you are trusting God for something, why don't you start preparing? Like, even if you don't have the like best point, eh, just do the IELTS exam. Just do it and do it. And again, if you're not, if, if your score is not good, you have the time to redo it. You know, apply for your worst evaluation. It takes time for it to come in. Apply for it. You understand? So you have that. And then you have everything ready. And maybe you have prior experience in Nigeria. Enter the pool with what you have. Even if your score, if your score is 200. <laughs> even if it is, let me tell you, last year, last year was a very big lesson to always embrace all opportunities. There were people that were in Canadian experience class. Um, they just brought down the score because they wanted people, you know, and those that were in CC, they brought down the score to the low level of 75. Imagine 75, having a score of 75. I was trying to imagine, like the, the person that had that 75 score, what was the, what was the person's score for IELTS? Like it was a very extremely low score. In fact, I'm sure the person would be in the pool and would never expect that they would ever get permanent residency with that score. But the person still had fit and stayed in the pool. So when they did the draw, sorry, when they did the draw, they just decided to bring down the score. It was so low and they were able to get in at that one opportunity and after that draw they never brought it down again you know it just kept going up and up if you remember correctly it was the scores were like at the point now um, express entry were like 500 uh, 470 480 and then pandemic happened and suddenly they brought it down to 75 so stay in the pool and just stay there and while you are in the pool keep making you developing yourself maybe go and learn french maybe go and um, go for uh, a degree maybe just you know to keep uh, in, uh, improving your score while you are there but don't just talk about it and not do anything okay i'm talking to someone now even as a student uh, do everything and enter the pool you have prior experience now enter the pool who knows a provincial nomination might open up to you like provinces just go in the pool and begin to select candidates and send emails to them and send them NOI notification of interest for them to apply for provincial nomination not everybody will get express entry directly some will have to go through provincial nomination get an extra 600 points to boost their scores but if they are not in the pool how do they find them so these are things that you need to um, take charge of be strategic position yourself because having a permanent residency is really good it helps you in a lot of ways it helps you 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 know everything is cheaper like domestic tuition do you know how much they pay like imagine you get in a pr while you are like halfway through your studies you'll be able to convert your status and you'll pay cheap for the remaining right you can't even get a loan like it just things are just easier for you so always be thinking of the future be proactive and just i just trust god for the best for you and for me as well for every one of us and that's all i'm going to say today on this one year versus two year thing um if you've enjoyed my video please give me a thumbs up remember to give me a thumbs up it encourages me comment like share if you have a question you can ask if i know the answer i will answer um, I don't answer some questions because I don't know the answer like I don't know I've not experienced it and I don't I hate misleading misleading people so if I don't answer your question I probably don't know the answer to it but if I do I would definitely respond or if I've experienced it or I know someone that has experienced it I'll definitely respond so thank you for joining once again I want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you for your interest in my channel till the next time take care and have a lovely day. Bye-bye.